in my discord i have reviewed a ton of resumes so if you're in my discord there's a resume review channel where you can submit your resume and i or any other professional will go ahead and re review your resume give you feedback on it and i have seen a ton of resumes so i kind of like have an idea of what most entry level resumes look like and also like you know what i would expect based off what has worked for me so using all of that knowledge i created this resume that i think is very optimal for anyone who wants to work in cybersecurity and needs a very very well detailed resume that shows their abilities in the very best light right so once again just if you, if you didn't know i have a, a discord so if you're not in the discord check the link in the in the description of the video we do resume reviews there it's been a little slow recently because i've gotten a lot more busier but you know over time i do try to take a look at those resumes but yeah this is the sample resume so i'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of give you the rationale behind why I think this is the most optimal resume. Now, for anyone who's looking to get to cybersecurity, so basically, of course, first and foremost, this is a one pager, right? Everything you need is in one single page, right? And of course, it starts with your name. But before I go into that, the reason why it's a one pager is because a lot of times, like people who are reviewing your resume, hire manager or recruiter, they're not necessarily probably reading everything that's in your resume. So having something that is very descriptive and tells a good story about your experience and your knowledge in one pane of glass like one single page is way better than having like two pages that's not that's filled with like things that are not really relevant to your experience especially at the entry level so entry level being that you're a college student looking for an internship or someone who doesn't have any it or cybersecurity experience or very minimal it or cybersecurity experience and is looking to you know get into the industry or change your role but at the entry level right that means like you know you've not maybe you have only you've only had like internships or maybe like non cybersecurity related jobs or no cybersecurity related job as well, right? So that's what I'm classifying as entry level. So your goal is to really capitalize on the things that actually matter really as a cybersecurity, right? Because that's really what the hiring manager or the recruiter wants to see. And it really what you should be putting forth for them to see that, oh, okay, this person has the skills or the knowledge or the passion that's enough for us to hire them and help them grow in their career. So let's go into each of these different things in this resume right so first of all your name up here i typically used to have my full name up here but i just limited it to my middle name and my last name just for convenience right so two names it's a lot easier to remember right that way and then of course your number this is a fake number it's literally nine eight seven all the way to zero and then your email so this is actually not a real email it doesn't exist and then your linkedin your github and your youtube right so this these three sections are um, very flexible but the one thing you definitely have to have is your linkedin profile and if you don't have a linkedin profile i just recently had a live stream where i went over how to make a linkedin profile from top to bottom and i'll drop the link to that live stream in the chat right now so you guys can check that out if you don't have a linkedin profile that is very important i'm gonna go over i go over all of those things in that live stream so i'll drop the link to that in the chat but the linkedin profile is very important because you're gonna have it up here the next year so the github is it's flexible so you can have like your website on here um if you have a website where you put like your projects on there or things you're working on like this is where you want to put that so you can always replace this with website or maybe like anything else that hosts things that show your ability right so website or github or both um, and then i put my youtube here because it's like a very huge part of my portfolio i would say that so that's why i have it up there but it's it's flexible right if you don't have a youtube then you could you can just put your website if you don't have a website you can just have just your linkedin and your github i, I also put sometimes my credly page here so if they want to verify my certifications my credly is also readily available at the top um, but this is very flexible but the most important things you need to have is a linkedin and either a github or a website or both right because you have to have something that shows where you're doing your projects you know where you're posting your projects on so those are two main things you have to have then a summary so i like to keep the summary to one or two lines because to be very fair like a lot of people are really scanning through your resume they're not really like reading your resume right they're just like skimming through it and you really want to give as much information in the most relevant way possible right so this summary here states that you're a cybersecurity junior with a passion for digital forensics threat hunting and incident response currently building my security analyst skills through the use of various ctfs certifications and projects slash labs right so very very well descriptive of what you're doing so and this is with the assumption that you're actually doing these things right so i, I would assume that you do have a passion for digital forensics for threat hunting and for incident response 
and you're also practicing with CTFs, you're taking relevant certifications and you're doing projects in labs to build your skills. Next is the certification. So this one, of course, like goes without saying, right? If you have relevant certifications that are applicable to the jobs you're applying for, then definitely want to list them up here, right? So of course, this is not full of like a bunch of like irrelevant certifications. These are very specific certifications that I think are very but related to anyone who wants to like get into cybersecurity at the entry level. And they're mostly practical certifications. So BTL1 is a practical certification. PMPT is a practical certification. EJPT is a practical certification. CompTIA Security Plus is not necessarily necessarily practical, but it's mostly like kind of like the de facto or like the most popular entry level one, right? And then the so AWS Solutions Architect Associate is like sort of sort of the entry level AWS certification, right? You can always have other ones you you have maybe like the Azure one or the GCP one, right? But I try to limit mine. I don't list all of my certifications on my resume. I only list like the top three or top five most important ones because like not all the certifications. I have are always going to be very important to all the rules I'm applying for. So I only list the most important ones up in my resume. So, but at your entry level, I probably expect that you might not have like too many certifications. And I hope, I'm hoping that you're taking relevant certifications like these certifications listed up here, right? So that's going to be for your certifications. Also listed here, I, I mentioned that this person is a cybersecurity junior. So I imagine that they're still in college or whatever the case is. So of course you want to have your education up here, right? Although your education is not really important, but if you, if you do have it, it definitely is a plus for some so it's it's nice to have it up there also like what college you went to what degree you're pursuing and then your graduation date now I personally don't think having relevant coursework is really important in your resume because I'm biased about the fact that a lot of coursework in your university is not really relevant. And that's a very extreme bias. I know that, but a lot of things are, that most schools offer for cybersecurity are not very practical and don't necessarily apply to what you're going to be doing in the real world. So I personally think that if that's going to take extra space, that's not relevant in your resume, do not bother putting it. Also like GPA, only if you're applying for internships, should you have your GPA in there and if they specifically ask for your gpa right if i'm not if if no one's asking for my gpa i'm not putting my gpa in there right um even if it's for an internship if the internship application doesn't say gpa something 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 i'm not putting it in there right which is also why you should have your resume tailored for each application so when i was applying for jobs i had a very specific resume for each job i was applying for so it might be the same thing but when i look at the application and i see what they're asking for i would change my resume up a little bit to make sure that okay i'm not putting unnecessary information and i'm not leaving out necessary information so make sure you're tracking each resume you're using for each job i had a folder where i would put the job and the application for the job and i also have a note for it as a matter of fact i think i do still have i might still have that folder i might not be able to find it right now but i did have a folder where i was tracking every single thing if i were to do it now i'll probably do all of that in notion because it's a lot more convenient that way but make sure that you're not putting irrelevant things also like if you've done courses like let's say a malware analysis course or like like a, a Coursera course, right? If it's not really relevant, to be honest, don't bother wasting space with that in your resume. However, if you do projects that are relevant from those courses and you documented them on your website or your GitHub, then that's when you're gonna have to put them on your resume, which leads me to the next section, which is the cybersecurity projects and labs. Now, this is taking the space of the courses or any of those things that you did. And what is really important here is you have to have these projects document, right? When you're trying to show your, your skill or your abilities without having actual experience, the best way to do that is through having obvious publicly accessible documentation that shows that you actually did those things. It's very easy to list three bullet points or five bullet points of what you did in your home lab and just act like you actually did those things. But what really adds to that is if you have documentation or a website or like a blog or something or a video that shows you actually doing those specific things, right? It gives you a lot more credit I've had times when I was in interviews multiple times when I was still at the entry level, which I'm still at the entry level like right now, but I've had like, you know, multiple times where people looked at my profile and, and my, my resume and they saw this project and they actually clicked into that link during the interview and were very impressed with the project that I did, right? They were even asking me questions about the project. So like, how did you configure security onion? How did you investigate alerts? All of those things like they were very impressed, right? Because I also had the documentation, right? So rather than just only just talking about it, like from my mouth, they could obviously see what I specifically did with that project, right? So it's very important that you actually take the time to do 
do projects and document them. You don't have to do 100 or 1000 projects, at least three projects that are very, very strong and credible that show your skill and your ability to comprehend the different things that you're learning, right? Which is important um, when you're taking courses, learn the skills and take those skills and apply them for projects and then list the specific things that are important about that project in your resume. That's that about projects and labs. So of course, this these are projects that I've most of them I've done by myself. So this one is my cybersecurity projects. It's hyperlinked here. It's on my website or Cyber Academy website and it shows everything that I did, right? Very, very well documented all the way through, right? Very well documented. And it's a very good project to get different skills, right? And I listed exactly what I did. So I designed a virtualized home lab network to test vulnerabilities and practice threat detection, utilize PF sense, blah, 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 all of those things, right? That I did with this project, right? If I also um, had like documentation of me practicing specific attacks or defense scenarios or beating out a detection, I would document that, right? That would be like maybe even a separate project, as a matter of fact, right? That's one project. Another one is the Azure Cloud Detection Lab by my friend Charles. I'm also on our Cyberworks Academy website. And it's a very nice, you know, detection project as well, right? For Azure environments, right? And here it's listed what you did, right? You configured and deployed Azure resources, including Sentinel to all of that stuff, right? This is not everything you did, but it's a, a very well defined summary of what the entire project is. Cause you don't want to, of course, have like too much information there that is not that, you know, might take away from exactly what you did, right? The goal is to have a really nice summary of what you did in the project. So I recommend two to three bullet points, maybe four. I think five is a little too much, but three very well, very well written bullet points that define exactly what you did in that project. Next is my AWS Instant Response Lab. I recently did, it's in my personal website. So basically defining what I did here, I'm um, in the project. And these are relevant projects, right? If I'm, if, if I want to work as a security analyst, right? Especially now in this day and age, especially with cloud, right? All, all of these things are very important, right? So, you know, Azure, um, AWS as well, right? It shows that I'm learning things about cloud environments. I'm using different tools to analyze comprom compromised activity in cloud environments, right? So it adds to what I was saying up here when I was saying that currently building my skills to become a security analyst through the use of various CTFs, certifications, projects, and labs. And this is where I'm capitalizing on the projects and labs that I've done in order to build my skills. And finally is the threat detection lab by one of our, from someone from uh, Cyborg Academy as well, right? So goes over how to use your hour for threat, threat detection, right? And as, as you can see, all of these are kind of centered around like threat detection, incident response, right? Because I believe you mentioned that you are interested in threat hunting incident response, right? So this shows that you're actually doing labs and projects related to that. So that's really the meat and bones of your resume. That's really what you're trying to portray, right? And especially if you don't have experience, right? Your projects and your labs are the big things you really want to capitalize on right because let's say you've, you you were working in a library right of course like it's work experience but it's not cybersecurity experience right so that's why the projects are really what are going to show that you're actively working towards the skills you need to work in cybersecurity right so that way there's more credibility with what you're learning and stuff like that also with adding the documentation like a blog or a video it's a lot more it makes you a lot more credible given that you actually did, did these things and yeah that's about it and then of course finally experience right so again the assumption here is like you're an entry-level cybersecurity professional so you probably don't have as much experience or you don't have a, like direct cybersecurity experience right so in this case i'm assuming the person is like a um, it intern at general electric right they worked there for about six months right so this covers right what they did right so here what i did with this experience right here for the person is that highlighting specific things that they did that are a little bit adjacent to cybersecurity one way or another right so for example they configured a directory system for 300 endpoints and deployment and uh, deployed an automated endpoint monitoring on each host right endpoint monitoring is very important endpoint detection response is very important they might not have worked in cybersecurity but they do have knowledge of automated endpoint agent deployment right that's really good valuable experience next they designed a powershell script to automate employee onboarding and offboarding increasing the speed and efficiency of both processes right so this shows that they have the ability to automate mundane or manual processes, which is very important for cybersecurity as well. Finally, the last thing they did was they supported the cybersecurity team with security infrastructure deployment and monitoring, right? So they might not have worked on the actual cybersecurity team, but as an IT intern, they supported the cybersecurity team with these things, maybe like deploying 
monitoring infrastructure for the cybersecurity infrastructure, whatever the case is, right? They did something to support the cybersecurity team, right? So this is the entire summary of what I think is the best and most optimal one page resume for anyone who wants to get into cybersecurity. No fluff, no, like no bluff. You're going straight to the point, right? You're given all the necessary details. Very, very neat, right? So not too many colors, right? Of course, there's a pop of color there, but gives it a little nice view to it, right? For example, if I had like this, if I had all these lines as black, right? It would look a little like bland, right? Which is not bad at, at all. But of course, like it, it's a lot more appealing and a lot more appealing to the eye.